All right, today we're going to talk about the Plasma Tree Pin Analyzer, how to download it, install it, run it, and interpret the results. Okay, first things first, how to download and install the Plasma Tree Pin Analyzer. Actually, you don't install anything, but you do have to download it. So you go to the GitHub repository, which I will put the link below. Uh, you browse down here. This is the actual source code, and we're going to keep on going down, 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 and right here. The PID analyzer relies on the black box decoder, so you first have to download that. So you go ahead and download, hit Windows Download, hit Save to File, unzip that somewhere into your computer or a storage drive or something. It's just an unzip. I'm not going to do that. I already have it done. Same thing for the Plasma Tree PID analyzer. You go ahead and go to this link. This will take you to a Dropbox location where you can download the latest version. Here, the older version. Just get the latest one. From there, you want to have, again, that black box tools unzip to a folder location. You can see I have it on a store drive here, and I have a folder. And then you want to download the Plasma Tree PID Analyzer, which is just an EXE, and you want to place it into the same directory as the decoder DLL files and the executables. Uh, the next step is really easy to run the PID analyzer. Go ahead and execute the EXEs. Once the command window comes up, you'll see it display like this. And that could take a little bit of time. You know, me running across a Wi Fi network uh, from a server, it takes about a minute to open up. It's uh, loading Python in the background. Just be patient. It does come up if the little box comes up. I give it a minute, minute and a half. You know, go get a cup of coffee or something, come back. Once it's up, you can leave it up. You don't have to keep opening and closing it, so it's not a big of a deal. After that point, I uh, usually have black box logs and you know directories. I try to keep track of stuff, so you can just grab the black box log, drag it into the window. You can see it loads the path for where it is, and you go ahead and hit enter. It's going to ask for the pilot name, so go ahead and enter your pilot name or whatever. All that's really used for, as you can see, is when I hit enter the second time, it's going to start to decode that data. It's going to make a folder wherever the black box log is at, and it's going to start to decode the black box data and put it into there. Obviously, the bigger the black box log, the longer that's going to take. If you look at this log, you know, this is a 38 meg log, so uh, it's going to take a little bit. Just give it some time. This could take, I don't know, two minutes to run, two to three minutes to run, so just be patient. A big window will pop up, and you can see it's starting to take some activity here. While that's running, one clarification here. You don't have to have all three versions or two versions, three total here that I have. You don't have to download all three of these, just one of them. In addition, I'll put this bookmark below as well. This is for uh, on RC groups where the developer has posted, uh, you know, in regard to Plasma Tree. There's only two pages here so far, so this is this is fairly new. I guess the first post was in 20, September 2017, so this is a fairly new tool. Uh, a couple pages here on how it works and, and so on and so forth, so check that out. And this is, you know, a group discussion on RC groups of, of folks that's using it. Um, looks like on the beta flight or the yeah, beta flight, butterfly, black box log review uh, Facebook group as well, which I started a long time ago just to get, you know, off of um, RC groups and onto a Facebook platform. But anyways, in there it looks like some more guys are using Plasma Tree. So there's two sources to kind of talk back and forth uh, with different folks, comparing things and seeing what you're looking at. Uh, definitely do bookmark this, uh, check it out, and then keep looking back here for updates. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you can see, you know, I had some posts on here as well. Okay, once it's all done, you will get this big window that opens up on your computer. Now this is on a Windows machine. I don't know how you run it on a Mac. There is a, a Mac version for the decoder, but I don't know about Plasma Tree. I think Plasma Tree has to be run on Windows. There's actually a post in the Facebook group about how to do it on a Mac, so you can check that out. Anyways, this is an interactive window. Uh, I It runs kind of slow, but you can save things and change settings and scale and zoom and all that jazz. This is probably the Python part. I normally just close this because it, it operates kind of slow. The If you go back to the uh, directory where that it made, it puts an image of that right there. So you can just open that image because really just looking at this as is is, is what we want to see. Again, I normally just close this window. Then I would go to the pin analyzer here. Uh, you can load another pit if you or another uh, black box log if you'd like and run another one. I think you can load multiple at the same time if you want it as well. So you can do that. If not, you would just hit the X up here as well to close this out. And you can see how it's kind of laggy there. And I do have the recording software on, so that takes a decent amount of CPU cycles. 
Okay, now on to the important part. So the important part is, what the heck are we looking at? So up here, on you have you see you have the roll, pitch, and yaw axes. This are the stick input moves. The orange is the roll loop input, and roll gyro is the blue. So you can see where they match on top of each other. That's what you want. Ideally, they match on top of each other perfectly all the time, but they don't. So in this scenario, you can see that the roll is pretty good. There's a couple spots there, not so much. It's overshooting here. There's some vibration here. It's overshooting down here, so on and so forth. The next is shown where your TPA line is for throttle. So anything above that line, you have to keep in mind that TPA is playing a role in your pitch. So if you want to take that out of the equation, just don't, you know, turn your TPA really high while you're going to do a plasma tree log or just don't do moves that are going to be above TPA for your, for your throttle input. The next thing down here is latency, response time in seconds. So blue, basically here blue is good. It's a waterfall diagram. Yellow is bad. So where you have yellow, you have more latency. Uh, and that's varying depends on moves. So I think in general plasma tree is good for a another point of data. I don't think it, you should use it as a sole point of data for PID tuning, but I think, you know, if you think you have a good tune, uh, things are looking nice, or you just don't know where to go next with it, run it in a plasma tree, see what, uh, see what it says as a point of information. We'll go through what this next diagram down here is a second, and then implement that and see if you like it or not. You know, it's just a point of data, not, don't take it as a sole, you know, direction on what you're going to do with your PIDs. So down here is really the meat. Anything in blue is below 500 degrees per second in rotation for the roll, pitch, and yaw. Anything in orange is above 500 degrees per second roll, pitch, and yaw. It has your PIDs here, so this is P, I, and D. And then it shows you this graph. So get an idea of what this graph should look like in the ideal scenario. Let's bounce back over to Plasma Tree in the GitHub and go to this wiki page on just PIDs in general, because PIDs are used for control valves and all kinds of things. It's as you know, we're not exclusive to us. So I think this graphic show, gives the best idea. Do read this up here. It is funny to me, not funny. It's uh, it's kind of nice to me that how closely when you read this, this perfectly lines up with the Stinger Storm uh, PID tuning approach for a line of sight. We turn the I and D to zero. You get P-term oscillations, then you crank up D to, to smooth those out, and then you crank up I for floating. That's exactly what this says, and this has nothing to do with quads. This is just general PID tuning. Some, you know, KP is P, KI is I, KD is D. We just call them PI and D, but this is uh, larger industries uh, use the K term, uh, sub D, sub I, and sub P. Over here is basically this plasma tree graph. As you can see, when it starts from the beginning here, when you crank up, you know, I and D are zero. When you crank up P, you're going to get a sharp response, but then you're going to start to get oscillations. When you crank up I, that's going to move it up to one. And then when you crank D, it's going to pull those oscillations out. So a perfect line is a super sharp response up to one, and it just flatlines right across one. That's the perfect scenario. Good luck getting there, but that's the ideal scenario, and you can keep referring to this. If you do go to the wiki, then you can go to influence parameters, and then you can see it starts to talk about P influence and D influence, so give that a read as well. There is a GIF in here, SCS110 tune GIF. Go ahead and down, what I would recommend is downloading that and then opening that in your Windows uh, image viewer. So let's pop over to here and let's go ahead. And I call I renamed it the tuning example and then we'll open that in our photo gallery. Sorry. Okay, opening that in the photo gallery, it's nice because then you can step through the GIF. If you just click on it, it opens an Internet Explorer or whatever, Firefox, Chrome, whatever you're using, but then it just keeps cycling through the GIF where if you photo gallery here you can kind of go page by page and you can see in this he has I and D set to zero and P of five P of five again now it's 10 15 20 25 30 goes 35 
40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and then takes it back to 20. So it's just an example of trying to show kind of uh, the extreme range of that and what that looks like. And then when you go back to, so you can look down here and then also look up here so you can see that it's not tracking, it's oscillating back and forth, so on and so forth. The next thing is raising I. So I'm not going to go through each of these slides, but to just take a close examination of this. As you go through I, how that brings it up to one, you know, almost immediately, then 30, uh, then he bounces back to 25. The difference between 30 and 25 is as you go higher, like in 30, it's starting to actually oscillate because of I. See that oscillation? And then, so he bounces that back to 25. Then, moving up D, you can see takes out these oscillations here. You still have this overshoot. That's what this overshoot. This is a nice sharp response, nice um, high slope line. And then, but it's overshooting one, which is one is what you want. One means it's tracking right on top of your input. So overshoot, now he's moving up 15, so on and so forth. Just keeps moving. Now it's 15, 15, 15 across the board. 10, 15, just kind of keeps playing with some different settings. And this is more for example's sake. Uh, you don't need to go through all this from ground zero. But you can see 18, 20, 20 is looking pretty good. Um, so 17, 20, 20. 17, 17, 20, 20, so on and so forth. And he's just kind of going around. So you can go up, this is 51 slides, so you can go up to 51, and you can see it's settled on 14, 10, 18. And, you know, is it 14, 10, 18? Is it 14, 12, 18? Now, there's pretty small changes in between here. I think you really start to enter from about slide 40 up, you really start to enter this envelope that. I kind of argue anything in there, you might not be able to tell the difference. So really how, you know, it's to me it's always the machete, steak knife, scalpel approach. The first is just the machete, get your general big tune filtering. You obviously want to tune filtering first. Make sure that's as tight as it can be, lowest latency as possible, but ample, uh, attenuating the noise as much as possible. And then moving into pit tuning, machete, steak knife. I think the steak knife takes you up to around slide 20 or uh, slide 40 and then from slide 40 up to 50. To me that's kind of the scalpel one. And a lot of people, including myself, I, I probably wouldn't, I don't get too involved with the scalpel. So leave you with just a practical look at a couple of logs. So this gentleman has basically ultralight quads with super uh, high power motors. That's his thing. He loves it. He makes his own frames, so on and so forth. So, Rand is, you know, working with him. He wanted me to, you know, take a look at the log, Rand and plasma tree. And what this was initially saying that, hey, your eye terms for your uh, yaw are way too high, uh, and it looks like you use a little bit more on roll uh, or on pitch. And roll looked pretty good. So I went ahead and implemented that. Said it did feel better. Uh, still had, you know, you can see they're still not just going up to one. Looked like P was a little too too much here as well, like the lower P. And it started to, I, I think, you know, this was just one point of information. So he tried that and said, yeah, it feels good. Now, I'm not sure, how, you know, how, how much farther he went with it. But, um, again, it's one point of information. It seemed to make sense on this one with a super light, craft and super powerful modes, you really shouldn't need much P at all. Uh, so even 33, which is kind of normal, uh, or actually kind of low already, but you know, if you have really powerful motors in a really low inertia light frame, you might not need much P at all. Same thing with D to some extent. And then further, it's like, well, why do you need so much I? Well, this thing could be getting blown around. It's so light as a feather, inertia, you know, any, any wind action on it moves it. So. That was kind of my take on it, and I was wondering if that's what the pit out But again, this is a hands-on thing. Just take for the third or fourth time. Just take it as one data point. You know, I'm sure Flo would love to receive your logs and information and talk. You know, this is his project. Developers get, you know, they love to see people using their stuff. So please use the RC groups. You know, give him feedback. You know, I'm sure he'll look at your logs and give input. I know he did for me the one time, just trying to understand this. So use that resource. Okay, last point is the fuzziness of the blue or orange line. That has to deal with noise and is trying to show you the 
ultimately the data is coming in with in the range of this whole blue fuzz area and really the solid blue line is the average of that so the the you want that to be as narrow as possible so you can see there's a lot of noise on the pitch axis here but not so bad on the yaw so on and so forth so uh, that again has to do with noise and filtering and that kind of stuff that's it well everybody i hope this helped uh, there's a lot of information do check with flow if you have specific questions he's the developer he knows all about this stuff i'm just trying to relay what i've learned and uh, happy tuning.